Hello everyone. Today we will have a look upon to the nervous system. Our nervous system is the most complex system in our body when compared to the other systems. It coordinates all the body activities. It enables the body to respond and adapt to the changes that happen inside and outside. These are the two main functions of the nervous system that you have studied in the previous class. Human nervous system is classified mainly into two, the central nervous system which consists of brain and spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system which consists of cranial nerves and spinal nerves. Today in this class we can study about the ner central nervous system that is about the brain. We will learn peripheral nervous system later. Brain is a three pound organ, human brain is a three pound organ that control the whole body. Three pound is equal to one and a half kilogram weight. Brain makes us unique. Due to certain peculiarities, it makes us stand apart from all the other animals. Brain is a delicate, complicated and important organ. Brain is the CPU or central processing unit of our body. Because of all these things, it is important to study more about brain. The main parts of the brain are cerebrum, cerebellum, medulla oblongata, thalamus and hypothalamus. These are the parts of the brain, cerebrum, then cerebellum, medulla oblongata, thalamus, and hypothalamus. Of these parts, cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. It consists of two parts. Before going on to the topic, I'll, we can play a brain game. Here I have some cards with me, some words are written on it. You have to say the colors on which the words are written, not the words. You have to hope you understood. You have to say the color, not the words written on it. The first one, the second one, the third one and the fourth one. So. Isn't it little confused? It's because of the conflict that takes place between the two parts of the brain. Here I have a model of the brain. This is the largest part of the brain. It's divided into two parts, the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. This part of the brain or cerebrum look like a nut that is walnut. Walnut is a brain boosting nut. So this hemisphere, the right side is called right hemisphere and the left side is called left hemisphere. The right hemisphere control the left side of your body and the left hemisphere control the right side of the body. The right hemisphere perform tasks that have to do with creativity and art. And the left side perform tasks that have to do with logic as in science and maths. These two hemispheres are connected by corpus callosum at the base. Here we can see many convolutions on the cerebrum. Convolutions means folds and twists. In other words, we can say fissures and folds. 
These convolutions increase the surface area of the brain so that it can accommodate more number of neurons. Studies say that there are 100,000 million neurons in our nervous system. The number is similar to the number of stars in the galaxy. More number of neurons, more intelligent a person be. So intelligence of a person depends upon the number of neurons he possesses. You might have heard the word intelligent quotient or IQ. It's the measure to assess human intelligence. So IQ of each person differ. It's not the same for all individuals. Now here, gray matter is seen outside and white matter is seen inside. You have studied or you are familiar with this gray matter and white matter when you study the structure of neuron. Gray matter is the part of neuron where myelin sheath is absent. Cell body, dendron, dendrites are parts without myelin sheath, so they appear gray in color. White matter means the part of neuron covered with myelin sheath, especially the axons. So in cerebrum, grey matter is seen outside and white matter is seen inside. Since the neurons are responsible for intelligence, the cerebrum is the center for intelligence. Then thought, imagination, we are able to imagine things. Then memory, we are able to memorize the multiplication table we have studied in the lower classes. Then problem solving, we are able to solve math problem. Then analytical thinking and so on. Cerebrum help to evoke sensations. There are specific centers on cerebrum for the sense organs. There are visual centers, auditory centers, the center to sense smell to detect taste and there's another center for speech that's called Broca's area. So the uh, cerebrum help to evoke sensations. Cerebrum also help in our voluntary activities. It control our voluntary activities. If I want to step to, uh, I, I want to move to two step forward. It's possible with the help of cerebrum. Voluntary activity means the activities that take place according to our will, our wish. So these are the functions of the cerebrum. Let me move on to the next topic that is cerebellum. Cerebellum, here you can see cerebellum. It's the second largest part of the brain. It is seen just below the cerebrum. It appears as two folds. Numerous fissures and grooves are seen on cerebrum. The fissures are and grooves actually it helps to conceal or cite the fact that cerebellum is a very thin membrane which is folded. Cerebellum helps to coordinate our muscular activities and it maintains equilibrium of our body. Or in other words, we can say body balancing is possible with the help of this cerebellum. If I am able to stand here properly, if you are able to sit on the chair, if you are able to ride your bicycle straight on the road, uh, if you are able to pick something from the floor, for all these things we need body balancing. This is possible with the help of cerebral. And here we can see another part called brain stem. The brain stem actually consists of three parts, midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata. That's the third part of the brain, medulla oblongata. It's seen just below the cerebrum and near to cerebellum. In all the brain parts, grey matter is seen outside and white matter is seen inside. This is medulla oblongata. It controls all the involuntary actions of our body. Involuntary actions means heartbeat. Uh, respiration, 
circulation of blood, transportation of nutrients, digestion, excretion, etc. These activities are not taking place according to our will. It just happens. So medulla oblongata is an important organ since it controls all our involuntary activities. A strong blow at the back of our neck may cause death of that person. Since medulla oblongata controls all the involuntary activities, a damage may result in the death of that person. When we open the brain, here I will show you the section of the brain. When you open the brain, this is a section of the brain. Here we can see cerebrum. This is a cerebral cortex. This part, this very small part is called thalamus. Thalamus acts as a relay station to carry impulses to cerebrum and from cerebrum. It collects information and sends only the important ones to the cerebrum. So that's about thalamus. Then near the thalamus, there is another part called hypothalamus. This part is called hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is part of a brain as well as it is considered to be an endocrine gland since it secretes certain hormones. The hypothalamus maintains homeostasis of the body. Homeostasis means healthful, balanced body stage. So that's about hypothalamus. The functions of the hypothalamus that maintaining homeostasis means uh, controlling water, uh, uh, control water in our body, uh, hormone regulation, then thirst, hunger, etc. Hypothalamus is also the center of feelings, emotions, anxiety, anger, etc. We usually use the word kind-hearted and hard-hearted. So it's not the, not the heart which is kind or hard, it's the brain that controls the emotions. So these are the important parts of the brain. So you might have understood the importance of the brain here. And here comes the necessity to wear helmets. Rather than considering it as a rule, it's our necessity to protect our brain. So, dear students, wear helmets while you ride two-wheelers and uh, motor vehicles. To wear a helmet means wearing the right kind of helmet, not the fancy ones. Now, I'll show you a simple method to draw the picture of brain. It's very easy to draw the picture of brain when you think about the boxing globe. So this is similar to our boxing globe. This is cerebrum. Many convolutions are seen here. This part is called cerebrum. Here comes the brain stem which consists of medulla oblongata and here comes cerebellum this is medulla oblongata now it's time to recollect what we have studied today we have studied the main parts of the brain, that's cerebrum, cerebellum, medulla oblongata, thalamus and hypothalamus. And we have seen the peculiarities and functions of each part. Thank you. Thank you.